What is going on, people of the internet? Happy Chaotic here. Lisa K. Double R. And welcome back, or welcome, if this is your first time visiting my channel. And Chaotic's Collection. The series where I will be looking at any and all collectibles, and I mean any and all collectibles, as well as go over information on said collectibles, which I will be going over information first. And I must apologize if if I end up talking weird, stuttering a bit more in this video because lately I've been dealing with a very bad toothache. Uh, right now the pain is very, very minor. I can pretty much ignore it right now. But uh, it's, it's, it's starting to kind of worsen a little bit, so I'm gonna have to take my oral anesthetic uh, very soon. Anyways, before we get right into the ears today, um, real quickly, I'm gonna do uh, basically a uh, previously on Chaotix Collection, go over my source once more and go over what will be coming soon for Chaotix Collection once more, a little bit more details um, near the end of the video. Now, for starters, of course, previously on Chaotix Collection, I went over some sub-category, a sub-category of errors. Within previous categories, I have already went over in previous videos. If you have missed those videos you can always check out the chaotic collection playlist i will leave a link probably somewhere on the screen or in the description down below if you're on if you're on rumble and odyssey sorry you're gonna have to just look for it um i'm still working on a playlist for odyssey and rumble does not have that feature so even if i wanted to no can do unfortunately until they eventually add in a feature for that but regardless thank you for watching on those platforms but yeah, if you haven't seen those previous uh, videos, you can always check out the playlist if they're available for you. If not, you can wait for my next video, which I'll get into in a sec, going over some previous sources and other information that can help you. Now, previously in the last Chaotix collection, and this is where I'm gonna go into the source, I went over this new source, eberref.com, which showed me that there are subcategories to these categories. And unfortunately, since there's quite a lot, I'm not going to be able to go over, ugh, excuse me, I'm not going to be able to go over all of them. Oh my God, this tooth is really messing with me today. Because of that, I'm just gonna finish up on this one subcategory plus an additional error that I really wanted to go into more detail on, which is actually from a, another subcategory, but I'm not going to be able to go to that subcategory today. So I'm just going to finish up with this subcategory on, uh, what is it again, alloy errors, and that one error, and that's it. We're going to take a break from errors for a, ri for a while, because if I just keep going on and on and on and on and on, I'm never going to be able to look at a coin and eventually go over some other information for other collectibles too because when it comes to chaotic collection again this is going to be the series looking at any and all collectibles any collectibles that has a collector's mark market out there can be bought sold or treated as a collector's item and i don't just want to only focus on coins it's it's going to be the primary thing i'm going to be focusing on focusing on for chaotic collection but i don't want that to be the only thing i focus on so we're going to take a break from errors after this video and a following video going over some proof and uncirculated coin errors. Maybe I'll go over some bullying and metal errors in the future. I still got to do some research on that. But I want to just go over that bit of information. Do a video on my previous sources, which is uh, the video that's probably going to be coming up next soon is a video going through all the previous sources I've been through going over some other videos and uh, content creators that can help you out when it comes to circulated coins uh, and maybe some other other stuff too related to numismatics and that's it I'm just gonna go over that stuff and link it all in the description down below to help people out when they're getting into this but that's that's gonna be later on soon and after that I want to do eventually do that video on Proven uncirculated coin errors, hopefully, bullion and medallion errors. If not, if it's still going to be a while till I can get the uh, information for that, then I'm going to do a video on why people collect coins and 
by proxy since it's still kind of part of numismatics in general and collected for very similar if not the exact same reasons dollar bills or banknotes and um well also medallions and uh, bullions to a degree i mean bullions aren't really collected in the sense of a collector so i don't too much they're also collected in the sense of an investment because you know gold and silver actual precious metals worth money to invest your money in especially when you can actually hold it and put it in your own safe not just having a certificate of some motherfucker saying no, i'm gonna they're quote unquote gonna hold it for you i i, I personally wouldn't recommend it i I'm not, I'm not buying any gold or silver yet but if i was to i want that crap in my hand not in somebody else's hand or somebody else's safe in my hand in my safe in my closet so yeah uh, I will go over errors. I will go over if people do collect that stuff, like just for collector's items uh, and sentimental value or historical value. But for the most part, silver and gold bullions, medallions, coins and whatnot are typically collected. Well, medallions and, and, and coins like that are collected for the sake of collection, but the bullions in themselves, ingots, bars, they're typically collected for investment. To eventually sell off later in the future when they're worth a little bit more and their weight in that precious metal. But again, we're going to save that information for a later date. Now, let's get into the errors. And we're going to get into this subcategory of errors. Alloy errors. I went over one alloy error in the previous video. So I'm going to go over the remaining ones. Then I'm going to go over our last error, which will be waffle coin. Yes, you heard that correctly. And I'm specifically bringing this up because for this specific year, I'm going to be going into a little bit more detail in because I found a forum on some discourse on this coin, which ended up giving me a little bit more information on the coin and the collectors who want it more than just, well, what I found on era ref. Not to say that era ref isn't helpful. It is. But this discourse definitely helps a little bit more. It adds... A little bit more information just understanding you know why specifically this coin is being collected and also why it isn't heard of too often or too often mentioned uh, which we'll get into when we get to it anyways the very first era we're going to be going over today is intrinsic metallic inclusions definition an intrinsic metallic inclusion includes all situations in which metal of a non-standard composition somehow resists melting or otherwise manages to maintain its integrity within the molten alloy. This 1948 scent displays a large strip of light gray metal running across the I'm sorry, obverse face. Close inspe inspection reveals that the metal inclusion is an intrinsic part of the coin metal strip present from the very beginning. It probably represents a glo globule, globule, a globe. I'm, I'm taking a gamble. A globule of unmixed, ugh, unmixed zinc or tin. You know, another example. This is another intrinsic metallic inclusion that was found on the reverse. Of this 1944p Lincoln scent. Now, as you can probably guess, for those of you who might be new, obverse refers to the uh, front face of the coin, and reverse refers to the well, the reverse, the back face of the coin, aka obverse heads, reverse tails. Anyways, on to the next year. Slag inclusions. Definition. The earliest point at which foreign matter can insert itself into a coin is when the molten alloy is poured into a mold for the ingot. During smelting, unwanted contaminants float to the top of the molten metal in the form of slag. This slag is supposed to be skimmed off before the alloy is poured into the mold for the ingot. If small pieces of slag remain behind they can end up in the ingot and persist their thorough oh i'm sorry persist their 
through all the subsequent steps of the minting process. Rolling, blinking, upsetting, and striking. A 1979 scent with a large slag inclusion that extends through the entire thickness of the coin. The original module was much larger, but about half of it fell out after the strike. And you, and you can see you that that really big asshole there. So yeah, slag. So what exactly is these unwanted contam contaminants? Well, this could be anything that came from just the original, what is it called? Or that the metal came from. Because when metal is, is mined and meant to be processed and smelted, you know, it's not just this, this, this fresh, smooth, or even this crooked piece of metal or metal alloy that, that just ha happens to be within this rock, like, like a diamond. No. Um, the metal is just... You, you get this, this ore rock and it's just all throughout the rock itself. And in that rock, there could be other such properties that make that rock, such as maybe silicon, which is what most rocks are made out of. What, uh, ugh, most rocks are made out of. Go outside, pick up a rock off of the floor. That rock is made out of mostly silicon. So there's probably uh, silicon in there. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know the full extent. You know, I'm not a, a, a mineral guy, but there are all types of other minerals that would be in that slag that came from the original ore that metal came from. And this goes for any metal that is smelted, not just in the case of minting, just any metal that is smelted for any purpose. That is what slag is. You can have slag and it's just leftover material from the ore it came from. It's the metal is not, it, you don't take it out of the earth pure like a diamond is. I mean, you still got to cut the diamond, but you find a diamond, it's just taking it apart from the rock. You can't do the same with metal. You gotta smelt it, and whatever the rest of the rock is, that's that's your slags, that's your impurities that you wanna take out. Otherwise, the metal is not gonna form right. And our next era and final era for this subcategory is gas bubbles. Definition On rare occasions, a pocket of gas forms and expands when a planchet is struck. The heat generated by the strike is deemed responsible for the gas expansion. The expanding gas pushes up the overlaying metal, producing a rounded bulge with soft borders. If the roof remains intact, the era is designated an oculated gas bubble. If the roof explodes from the internal pressure, we call it a ruptured gas bubble. If the roof is thin, it will flex or it will be left with a dimple when the tip of a toothpick is pressed into it. If the roof is thick, it may not yield to pressure. By definition, oculated gas bubbles are generally restricted to solid alloy issues. While gas bubbles are sometimes seen on clad coins, these always turn out to have been caused by heat applied externally outside the mints. Occluded gas bubbles should not be confused with blistered platinum, the latter being an affliction restricted to copper plated zinc scents. And here we got this example of blistered platinum, a 1986 D scent with blistered plated, well, platinum is shown in the above image. The blisters are unusually large. Yeah, so it literally straight up looks like. A blister you'd probably have on your own skin, honestly. Um, and speaking of bubble, I actually have a dime where it has, a, well, not bubble, a dimple on Roosevelt's head in the back of the skull. Now I cannot say for sure that it's a gas bubble or not an issue from a chipped die, because honestly, it's not soft. It's very thick and it's very, very, very small. It's the tiniest of dimples that would probably almost perfectly fit on the tip of a toothpick if not maybe at least the tip of a pen but it's definitely a dimple not something that I, I that I think could be created outside of the mints um, and we will eventually check out that coin and we'll see for ourselves soon enough but uh 
that's what I can say for sure. It's a dimple, but I can't say for certain if it was caused by a gas bubble. Anyways, on to the next era. Damaged coins. Waffled and cancelled planches and coins. Now for this section, we're going to be going over the cancelled waffled coin. I'll explain why it's called that in a sec. But in this section, there's not only the waffle coin. It goes over other types of post-strike mint damage coins. With, which is all types of weird patterns and whatnot. But we're not going to go over those today because it would extend the video to 40 minutes or even an hour going over those examples. Never mind the time it would take to, to get all the visual examples, the, the images for that. Because this the, the ones below the waffle coin, they, they have images, but I don't know. I, I, I got to double check and make sure that I don't need to get more. So even though there are more examples of other post-strike mint damage coins on this list we're only going to be going over the waffle coin for right now when i eventually get back to the subcategories this will be one of the very first ones with it, with its own dedicated video since it's quite a mouthful to go over anyway so let's go over waffled coins or canceled waffle definition coins and planchets which are found to be unacceptable by mint standards will be cancelled in a machine that crushes the disc and imparts a waffled pattern. These coins are sent to outside contractors to be recycled. Now as I've mentioned in plenty of my videos when it comes to materials making coins they always recycle them. So this is nothing new. They recycle everything they use. Since there is little to no attempt to restrict access to these demolished coins, many have made their way into the marketplace. So funny thing is, this one's not really an error per se, at least this was nothing unintentionally made by the machines during the minting process. This was done on purpose with a completely separate machine. Which is whole, which its whole purpose is to destroy the coin enough so it's, I guess people don't want to collect it, and then they can recycle it. But see, here's the thing: when it comes to coins from the mint, straight out of the mint, it doesn't matter if it's done by accident, done on purpose. If if if, if you damage the coin, practically still on mint grounds like outside the building nowhere near the machines but somehow you damage the coin like crushing it under a vehicle directly on mint's property people would probably still collect that shit because it's still happening at the mint if it happens in the mint by the mint it's mint damage mint damage coins are what are collected so whether it be error and on purpose, post-strike damaging, it doesn't matter. It's still mint damage. It is the post-mint post -mint damages that do not count, that do not matter. Whether general wear and tear or somebody trying to take a machine to make it look like a fake error, which would be a counterfeit coin error, that's the shit that people don't want. Post-mint damage, nobody wants a post-mint damage coin. A mint damage coin, people want. So whether it's an error by accident or done on purpose, even though it was done to prevent people from wanting to collect a coin, people still want it because it was done by the mints. Which we're, we're going to actually go into that a little bit further as we go into the discourse from the forums I found out. Uh, but of course, let me just read this final paragraph at the bottom. This statehood quarter blink did not meet mint standards and was put through waffling press for eventual recycling. Um, so yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to go through the whole process uh, to be waffled. Just any sort of standard, like not the right, right size and shape of the planchet, they'll try again. Waffle it, recycle it, send it back through the whole process. Of once they, you know, smelt it back down to sheet metal, that is. All right then, people, that's actually where I'm going to go ahead and end the video because 
Well, I did say I was going to go over that discourse and I did record that segment for the video, but it came out a little bit long, so I'm actually going to save it for its own separate video. Uh, however, I will leave a link to it in the description down below if you do want to check it out for yourself before that video comes out and I do give my thoughts on it. Uh, or if you just want to check out that uh, forum site for yourself and get into other topics or start your own. I will also leave a link in the description down below to another one that I found uh, in my research for Waffle Coins. If you also want to check that one out or just check out any coin forums in general. I was going to leave a link to the discourse uh, that I found for that website. But it wasn't really that interesting or that very informal. So I'm just going to leave a link to the forum site in of itself like to the main homepage. And you can, you can just check it out if you want to. Oh, and before I forget, because I did forget to do this at the beginning of the video, I'm going to leave a link to my source in the, in the description down below um, for the website I went over the ears for. Forgot to say that. I try to make sure to say that in the beginning of my videos all the time, but forgot to say it. And just so it's known, I'm always going to leave links to my sources in the description down below. How When I even do commentaries if i talk about a certain topic and i got my source from an article or, or even another youtuber i'm gonna link them as a source in the description down below but yeah forgot to sort my source um as for that for the future content to come besides the video on that discourse uh it's gonna be simply uh, uh very simply edited no example images or anything like that i'm not going to put the discourse in the background i'm just going to be, talk about it and you could probably listen to it while you're doing some chores uh but yeah we're probably going to have that next week on wednesday as for future content to come well at the time i'm recording this soon on monday i'm gonna have to go into the dentist to try to get uh, a wisdom tooth pulled out now, I do not know if they're going to try to send me home and give me antibiotics first to take care of an infection, which I think I am developing because it's been hurting like a mother for this past week. Ugh. I'm able to talk right now because the pain's not really bad. In fact, it's kind of numb right now, but I, I need to get this thing out of my mouth already. Just gone. It needs to go. Um, so I don't know if they're going to take me into surgery right then and there and take it out or if they're going to be like we're going to send you home give you some antibiotics let that do its job for a while then we're going to schedule this day for your oral surgery so that way when they do pull it out and they try to sew me back up there isn't the risk of a very serious infection um, while I'm healing sure by then they would still prescribe me antibiotics but I'll have to wait till they're ready if I don't have the money ready by then, which most likely I I won't, I'm broke, um, it's going to have to sit at the pharmacy till I have the money. <sighs> Meaning if they do prescribe it to me first, I probably won't even be able to get it until Friday. Crap. But we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll get lucky. Maybe I won't. But uh, if I do have some extra time, extra days before I get the tooth pulled out to take care of this other content, then I'm going to take care of it. If not, well, what you're going to get besides that already recorded segment is I'm going to make a, a video going over my previous sources and some other stuff that can help you out when it comes to coin collecting, uh, such as other forums like the ones... I'm bringing up and I'm gonna that and that I'm gonna be linking down below. I'm gonna link them again in that video, link all my sources, uh, link some websites that go over prices of certain coin errors. Um, I don't know if they're completely up to date, but hopefully they can help. Um, and link to some content creators that can probably help you out and show you what you should be looking for across multiple platforms: YouTube, BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey, and TikTok. Shout out to anybody who's watching on those platforms. Uh, yeah, there are some coin uh, content creators on TikTok. That's actually how I got into this stuff. I don't know exactly wh who I'm going to recommend just yet. I got to do some more research. I have an idea for YouTube content creators, but on the other platforms, um, 
I'm gonna have to check one last time because the last time I checked, there was only only like one or two content creators doing anything remotely similar to to this topic on those platforms. Last time I checked, which was months ago. Hopefully by now, by the time I check for that video, there will be some more going over coins or just other stuff having to do with numismatics uh, and coin collecting or, or money collecting in general. But we'll see what happens. I know on BitChute there's I really can't find any coin tubers, but I did find somebody going over gold and silver prices. So that's at least related to bullions. So I might link guys like that still in the description to help you guys out. Uh, even though I am not going to really go over bullions anytime soon. I do want to eventually do a video going over proof and uncirculated coin ears, which if I have enough time uh, before I can get that oral surgery done, I will do a video on it. Uh, if not, we'll see what happens. But I do want to eventually get to a video on proof and uncirculated, ugh, uncirculated coin ears, as well as maybe a video on metal and bullying coin ears. But we'll see what happens after I take care of proof and uncirculated coin ears. And another video I want to take care of before I actually take care of that is a video on why people collect coins in general. So those are definitely some topics within coin collecting or numismatics in general that I want to eventually cover. But what is to come soon, uh, either right before my hiatus or at least I'm going to record it before my hiatus. By the time you see these videos, uh, my hiatus might actually already be over and I may already be healed. But what I'm going to try to record and have ready during my hi uh, hiatus will at least be that already recorded discourse and my thoughts on it uh, in a video on all those sources that can help you guys out. And if I do have enough time before again the oral surgery, I'm going to take care of the video going over some proof and uncirculated coin ears. If not, that'll happen I'll, or I'll record it after my hiatus is over and I'm healed. That, Assuming again, it, it isn't already over by the time these videos are uploaded. I may have enough time to start recording, editing, and uploading and get back to schedule. But by the time you guys are seeing this video, for all I know. But we'll see what happens, because life is chaos and you just got to work with what it gives you. That's life. Um, yeah, that's... That's really about it. That's what's to come. Oh, by the way, um, I do other stuff too on the Hyper Chaotic channel, which that's if you're on this channel. I do plan on eventually putting this content on its own channel in the future, but I might not be able to do that till the end of this year. However, if you are watching this video in the future when the Chaotix Collection channel does exist and this content is moved over to that future channel, Thank you. Welcome. Um, Chaotix Collection, the channel, will only be for the Chaotix Collection series. Series, I don't know why I said it that way. <laughs> uh, but on my primary channel, Hyper Chaotic, I do other stuff too. Primary, primarily, ugh. I started too much. Primarily, a lot of experimenting. But I will be doing other stuff too. And I will have a commentary coming out very soon. Um, going over the Star Wars lightsaber that I want to talk about as well as maybe a video um, going over Marvel or MCU phase 4 I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna have that Star Wars video ready before I have uh, my hiatus start but for that other one I don't know we'll see what happens again if I have enough time before I get that oral surgery uh, just hmm Life doesn't give me a break ever. Well, it doesn't really ever give anybody a break, but ooh, still. <sighs> Running my channel in between is a pain in the ass. And I don't even work or go to school. I, I, I do take care of the house, but even then, if I did go to work and school, then it would be much harder to manage this channel. Um, that's about it. Enough rambling. See you guys in the future for that discourse video 
and hopefully my video on proven uncirculated coin errors and citing tons of sources to help you guys out with this sometimes interesting, sometimes boring hobby. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video or if it was very informal. If not, leave a dislike and a comment telling me why. And you know, interaction is good interaction for my channel and the algorithm. Yes, even your dislikes. And I appreciate you watching this video all the way to the end. Even if you didn't like it, I appreciate your time. Get it out. Have a good one.